Um, today I'm just going to go over AskTrace, which is a tool we, our support team uses a lot. Um, my name's Marty. I run our support team at MageMojo. And AskTrace is one of those tools that I think a lot of people don't use. It's very simple, and it's, almost, it's on almost every server. Um, I have a few slides, but mostly I'm going to go back into the shell and just show a few examples closer to the end, because um, it's easier to see than it is for me to just show some shell commands and you hope they work. Um, but first, in the context of other debugging or profiling tools, S-Trace is probably the least of them. Um, if you have a problem in Magento performance-wise, you're probably going to go check uh, the profiler first, or depending on your workflow, there's a lot of other tools. You have xDebug. Um, some people use New Relic to try and monitor things. Um, New Relic's more application monitoring, so you can't use it live as much. Um, for performance, we also use Blackfire.io occasionally. Their profile graphs and tools like that are pretty useful, especially for visualizing. If you want to give a customer an S-Trace, you're going to see in a few minutes it's like just a big garbled mess until you're used to looking at it. Um, and then you have also IDEs, and there's all kinds of more advanced tools you can use. And those can be tedious to set up, uh, depending on your dev environment. And a lot of times, on our support side, we're operating on a production server where you can't just go in and start installing whatever you want, um, pulling any data you need. And the reason for this is that we have this small team of mathematicians that we pay, and they use machine learning to actually analyze our tickets to see what the actual issues are in the tickets. So this is a graph of our ticket system from the last week, and it shows the tickets by theme. And there's a few different themes. Um, but if you look closely at the legend, which it looks like you can read, um, there's like slow and then site is down. Those are the issues we use S-Trace for. And if you go through the stack graph, that's, you know, that's almost half our issues right there. And you need to be able to troubleshoot those quickly and on the fly in a live environment. Um, and I really just wanted to show that graph because the machine learning side that we have is pretty interesting. Um, and we're also doing sentiment analysis, but that's a different topic. <laughs> um, so to get started, if you're in your Magento web route, once you've logged in via shell, you can run a very simple command, and you'll get a big output, and then hopefully that tells you something about what your problem is. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, Of course, hold on, I lost all my connections when I walked in here. <laughs> so we're gonna, if you're watching MageMojo support at work. We want the, we want the first site. <laughs> um, so I have rigged a few sites for us here. I'll just save myself some time. So if you trace a page, you get all this. In this particular example, it's a site that's got a pretty critical issue. Um, you'll notice this is going to take quite a while. Um, your standard Magento page is not going to take this long. If you're watching closely, you might be able to tell it's a bunch of database queries flying by. Um, in particular, the home page on this site has 11,000 MySQL queries. So it takes 20 seconds for that page to load. Um, so that was basically unreadable for you. And that's your typical S-Trace experience. Um, so you want to output it to log, or you're going to have to start taking things down to see what's actually happening. Um, so from that, say you wanted to know what was happening, but you don't want to see all the select statements. You can just filter it out. and you'll start to see the actual calls hanging. So there's some custom modules in there that are stopping. Um, that's a bunch of junk being sent to the database somewhere. And we see some other theme files coming by that you might be able to pick out. It's a little hard at first. Trying to read S-Trace is kind of like staring at the text that flies by in the Matrix movies. And you know it's going to take some practice if you start, haven't used this before. Um, 
So don't worry if that doesn't actually make any sense yet. Um, so when you see that fly by, you're seeing system calls. You're not gonna get function information, anything Magento really specific. Um, so you're just looking at what's happening on the actual server that you're working on. Most Linux systems, unless you're using some strange like Docker setup, uh, it's gonna be simple to S trace and you're just gonna see everything. Otherwise, you might have to do some more work to get in there. Um, don't concentrate on this image, really. It's just for you to know that S trace is showing you system calls and it's not doing any sort of debugging for you. It's not showing, if you see a theme file lagging in the S trace, there's something in there doing it, but you're not gonna see what it is until you actually go read it. Um, so for our support side, the reason we do that is because we don't need to necessarily narrow it down that far. We just have to pick out like whether the module's bad. So if you're doing some preliminary work on a site that has quite a few issues, that gives you somewhere to start instead of having to really start with nothing. And it only takes a few seconds to do that versus maybe having to copy the site, get a dev copy going, and do all this work. Because you can do this on a production server and you're not gonna break anything. Um, so those calls in the initial command I showed you, there's only a few calls you actually need to care about when you're working with Magento. Um, these are the main five. Receive from, I don't really use. I, it's the data coming back from some source like Redis. And there's a, it's usually unreadable and you can't get much from it. But usually what you're looking for lagging is opening because once like a PHP file or PHTML file opens for Magento 1, um, 2 has a lot more files, but in Magento 1, you'll at least see it lag, and then again, you know that open, there's some code execution going on after it opens uh, because it's linear. PHP isn't doing some crazy asynchronous work that you have to think about. Um, and write, typically at the end, you'll see it write the raw HTML. Uh, so all these issues you're gonna be able to see in S trace in one form or another. If your server is, say, dying, the disk drives are just about to fall over and you're gonna have to replace them, you might get high IO weight and you're gonna see that because the S trace is gonna crawl. It's just gonna go by line by line as slow as possible. Um, slow DB calls, those send to commands, you'll see them hang. Um, that can be a bit of a trick because you might see a database call that's slow but it's really the processing of the results of that query that are taking time. So you can copy the query from the S trace and go test it out. Um, for example, if we take one of these queries, um, if anyone's photosensitive for epilepsy, this is probably not gonna be a good presentation for you. So you can take like these queries here, like this one, and you can run that directly if you wanted to test how long it takes to run. once you get into the shell. You know, so we know that query is not very slow in that case. So if you had seen that hang, you would go run the query, and if you have MySQL query cache on, that might affect the result. Um, but in this case, it's not going to. So it only took zero seconds, so the query itself is not the problem. It's really the number of queries in that particular case. Um, so back in our slides here. Um, you'll also see like locks, permissions issues, uh, the slow code and DB calls are gonna interact. As I said, you're gonna have to do a little bit of logic to actually figure that one out. Um, and then it, earlier there was a little bit of a, on the profit line there, there's a few other options that you can do. Um, if your site's full SSL, that initial command's not gonna work. You have to tell S trace when you make the request that it's all HTTPS. Um, you can do other tricks like display the time next to the output, um, so it'll look like that. You can get, if you use both flags, you're actually gonna also get a time stamp of exactly when it was executed, like seven o'clock. Um, and the system times are all gonna be pretty low, but you can still use that and filter. Um, you, there's a couple different ways you could do that. I tend to use grep because I'm lazy. Um, for ex example, if you wanted to filter out calls that were above a certain amount of time, you could do it. Uh, a simple way to show that is right here. 
so you can just filter out, say, the number of zeros. Uh, of course, you have to add the correct flag. At home, I have a larger desktop with multiple monitors, and this goes a lot faster. Um, so we can see the times there, but now I'm only seeing the times that are not very short. So you can pick out the longer ones. Um, you can keep adding filters using grep, or if you have another clever way, someone can tell me about it. Um, you could make a script that would do this for you. You could filter out and profile. So we're just seeing the slower calls. And you know that was a lot less out of the total number. So in that particular case, this problem is still just the sheer number of calls, um, not the actual individual calls themselves. And you can use the minus C flag. That'll give you a little table at the end. It'll show the types of calls and the number and how much time they gave you. Um, that's not particularly useful in the Magento cases that we see in our support side, because um, typically you're going to see the other problem in the trace itself. But if you do want a summary, it might point out the IO weight more obviously for you. Um, tools like Blackfire will also show you IO weight. Um, and there's a lot of other tricks we can do. Um, you can trace just about anything, like if you're running N98 and you want to trace a cron job, you can do that. You can just call the crons from N98 while you're S tracing it. You'll see the menus, and then you pick your cron. So if your site map's not generating, but you know the cron itself is running, you can trace that and see what happens. Um, and that hopefully will give you some clue as to why your site map's failing. Typical reason for that is your memory limit is hit in PHP. And as I showed before, you can still grep results. You can go for a specific page when you change the request URI. Uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit. I have a lot more examples. So another example is you'll find problems <laughs> in themes. So let me just pull up my command here. So this is another site they've got a fairly slow theme. It's not as bad as the other one. There's not 20,000 queries, but we want to narrow that down. So what you do is you just start eliminating things that you don't care about. Um, the send tos, you typically don't need to see unless you're looking just to see what happens. Um, so you'll notice, I'm going to run this again, but you, you probably see a pattern in the middle there. So this is kind of how we troubleshoot it. Like you're seeing a repeating pattern. So now you're the human recognition bot in this case and you're seeing this little loop in the middle, like right there. So it's looping over these same PHTML files, reloading it each time due to some flaw in their theme. Um, and they've also got a PHP error, it looks like, <laughs> or a Magento error. So you'll see those two. You'll see like the PHP error log being output to, so you can read it right there in the context that it's generated. Because otherwise, you might be tailing that log, and you can see it, and you know what happens on the request, but you don't know when. Um, if it's fatal, it's at the end of the request, but if it's not, it's just an error. It'll be right in the middle, and then you can see where it happened. Um, and that hopefully gives you some insight into the problem. If you're not a dev, you can take it to your dev, because that's what we do on our support side. Our team is not a bunch of coders. I do not code. I sometimes write scripts, and that's about as far as it gets. And our team doesn't need to know how to code, but we still support Magento in this way. Because at the end of the day, we are, you're still trying to narrow things down, and it saves our customers time because you, developers, you're kind of expensive, and they would rather not pay you. Um, so they pay us less instead. <laughs> um, but we're also saving you time because you don't want to sit there and break fix every tiny error that comes from your client either, if you're the developer. Um, so in that case, they would have gotten a loop and been able to see that. Um, you can also, if you don't know what page you want to request, or you have something like a backend request, say you're in the Magento admin and there's an error there, or you're doing an import, some task, it's failing, you're not going to be able to request that, um, like I showed earlier. So you can actually just trace every process on the server. Um, this works better in a dev environment, because if your server's under a lot of traffic, say, you know, dozens, hundreds of requests, you're gonna end up tracing all of them and it's gonna bog down the server. Um, one other thing we do if we can is we just restrict all traffic so you only see your requests. Um, an example of that, since my sessions keep dying. 
Also, I'm the guy that does everything on Windows while managing Linux systems. So from that slide, uh, we'll just do writes because it'll, uh, we'll do send to or open. So now we're tracing PHP FPM on ours. This is one of our servers. Um, on yours, you might have to do it differently depending on your actual stack. Um, so you could trace anything like this too. You can trace Nginx. And once you start making requests, you'll see that output. So you can see the live output. So this is like someone is hitting the site. Now I can see what's happening as it flies by. So if I have a live issue, you could sit there and output this to log and then try and find your PID later because on the left side, there's the PID you can see. And if you have PHP FPM, you might have their access logs enabled, which you could also use to help correlate the request. And then you can grep that log and filter it from there and see which request was actually the one that loaded the backend for you or whatever you're trying to find. So this is good for stuff you really can't automate well or even like a checkout issue. Um, you're not necessarily going to be able to go in there and make a checkout request through the command line. There's probably a way to do it, but it would be time consuming versus just loading this up, outputting it, and going to the website and doing it yourself. Um, a few other examples. Uh, we'll still use that. Um, I rigged a sample data store here to, it's just in a dev sandbox mode to send orders through. Um, I put a credit card hack in it. So in Magenta 1, if you remember, a lot of patches dealt with this where cc.php, which is a core file, would get compromised. And what would happen when it prepares the save for the data? It takes the credit card number. Someone usually puts in some function and mails it off to Russia. That's the typical destination. It's not always Russia. If you're from Russia, sorry. Um, Indonesia is another popular destination for credit cards um, if they would like to go on vacation there. So what you'll see, I, I took the time to put this in a log later. So it emails me. So right there on this line, it's, it just sent me an email with some information. Um, I think I messed up the part that actually sends me the credit card number, but you can see the expiration date and the IP that requests with me from. So every time someone checks out, that'll get emailed out. Um, so that would be a clue to go maybe go check that file and figure out what's going on because above here should be that file. Yeah. Well, there's a little more to the checkout, but it's right near there and you'll see that's where it's coming from. Um, probably you could use tools to compare, see if the core was hacked. And actually I was testing this this morning and part of our support we did malware scanning Someone on our team, one of my support guys, cleaned it and got rid of the hack, <laughs> which I had put there and clearly had my name. So, on, so at least we're pretty diligent about cleaning our servers, but um, I don't know. I tried to be mad about it, but at the same time, it was good that they checked and cleaned it, um, even though it's a sample data store. Um, to give you a more obvious example of a slow site, Let me put in all the flags here. I don't think we need the rest. We don't need the connection. Connections, you'll usually just see MySQL and maybe Redis if, if you have any services. If you're trying to diagnose like an email issue, you might see the external SMTP. Um, that's also good for malware detection, depending on the nature of it, because you'll sometimes they do actually make some requests to an outside server, and you can block that um, while you clean it. Um, Again, that tends to go to Russia. St. Petersburg is usually where the IP is. Um, it looks like somebody's on my site. <laughs> um, no, okay. Um, okay, good, that stopped. So on this one, I've messed with the product view a bit, which should work. Let's see if it shows up. <laughs> I 
No, that's too, e too easy. Okay. Sorry, wrong one. Um, so now if we start tracing that, we should see the lag on the view file. Um, that little script is just making a request every second or so. Um, so right there, we can see, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see that, but there's a view.phtml file that's getting paused on right at the bottom. Um, so it's gonna keep doing that for a few seconds. Um, so that's an indication you have a problem in your theme, typically, that's just another example. Um, I think if you see it working, it makes a lot more sense. And in practice, you could even see this in the live trace if you were doing everything, like I am. If you have more traffic, you would still see this, especially if it's a file that's used on nearly every page. Um, you would be able to see that this is getting stuck there, so you need to go check out what's there. I just put in a PHP sleep statement, so it just waits five seconds. Um, but typically, that'll tie into, you'll see a lot of database queries or it's loading some for loop type of thing, and that's just a simple code issue. Um, depends on the theme and also, you know, depends on the exact issue. So, hopefully that's helpful. Um, there's actually a lot of other tricks you can do with it. Uh, I don't know that I can go into everything about it. I'm hoping there's some questions, but by seeing it live, I wanted to hope show people what we actually do, as I said, and so if you submit a ticket to us, that's the first thing we're probably gonna use if it's a performance issue. And then from there, we'll narrow it down or use tools like Blackfire if we have to. Um, usually you end up in those tools when it becomes more complex. Um, for example, that first site with the 11,000 queries, um, you can filter out the queries and you'll see a few module specific files hanging and those are related, but that their actual solution turned out to be an interplay through various things that wasn't obvious through the linear logic that we're using in S-Trace because when you're using S-Trace, you're kind of treating everything as just a straight line problem. You're just going through and then you go back and you start taking things out, um, start disabling modules, re-enabling them, see what happens, um, revert the theme to default. Typical stuff you might do anyway, but this will give you a little more feedback and data to hopefully um, actually make a decision quickly instead of guesswork and not knowing if what you did actually made a difference. Um, for example, just one more quick example for everybody. Um, you can put things like the time commands. So you get that trace, you wanna know how long this takes. Um, you can go back to the beginning and you can just, you know, you put time in front of it like you would if you're familiar with the shell enough. And then at the end, it spits out how long it took, and you can use that to record a statistic instead of trying to rely on browser time. Um, so that's like the processing time itself right there. Um, so that's hard data you can track and use. You could actually, one thing we've done too is you take scripts and you automate it, so you make like 20 to 100 requests like through S-Trace like this, and then you can do some analysis and make sure they're all within a certain range so you know statistically it's going to be this average load time, and then you can do it again when you make changes. Um, it's kind of a low level way of evaluating performance without having to get too fancy. Um, so hopefully that was enlightening. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> Hold on. Or I can show another example of some kind, too, if there's specific requests. I will make this quick so you can show the example, but uh, since you're basically open sourcing it with this talk, do you think you guys would be adding this to like your knowledge base or FAQ or some kind of document so you can um, we should. your leadership? I think there might actually be a page on our KB, but I'm not sure. I know we have one internally, so I can copy that out and everyone can see it. Um, I nominate you to write the most badass blog article of all time. <laughs> Is there anything else or specific like idea you might want to use S trace for? No more questions? Okay, one more demo then. You have a few minutes and there's a break okay. after this. Okay, so. um, I can ramble for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, let's talk about politics. Um, no, 
So, no, we're not going to do that. That's a bad idea. Um, but no, S-trace is really <laughs> useful, and frankly, I think people don't realize it exists, because um, you can also use it, like you can trace all the NGINX, you can see the NGINX, like what it's doing, say you have a rewrite, you're trying to figure out where the rewrite occurs, um, varnish issues you can trace. Um, pretty much anything that's running on the server, you can use like the bulk command to trace all the child processes. Um, again, with NGINX, we tend to trace it because people have a rewrite issue, and you see it in curl, and wget, and it's going all over the place, but is it bouncing around in PHP from a Magento rewrite, or is it NGINX? Um, that'll show you, because it'll spit out the access logs and everything like that. Um, Really, there's no limit to what you can find with it, as long as you don't need to go too deep into your code, because, again, it's not going to show you what's in there. So I think that's all I have.